Hello friends, this video on excretory products and their elimination part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. It is question time now. So let us look at some of the questions just to check if you got the lesson right or not. So let us look at question number one. It says, explain the autoregulatory mechanism of GFR. I hope you remember what is GFR. It is glomerular filtration rate. Right? So, what do we mean by autoregulatory mechanism? Now, I told you that the fluid or the blood enters into the uh, glomerulus through the afferent arteriole. And then the blood gets filtered and the remaining concentrated blood comes out through the efferent arteriole. Now, the amount of blood which gets filtered or the amount of filtrate which is formed, that is which gets into this Bowman's capsule, per minute is known as the glomerular filtration rate. Now, what controls the glomerular filtration rate? So that neither too much of filtrate is formed nor too less filtrate is formed. So there is a mechanism which regulates the uh, glomerular filtration rate and this mechanism is autoregulatory. That means there is no, uh, not involvement of any other system or any other organ in regulating the GFR. It itself regulates the GFR. So let us see how now, this autoregulatory mechanism is carried out by juxtaglomerular apparatus. Now, you might ask, what is this juxtaglomerular apparatus, which is also commonly known as JGA. So, this is basically an arrangement which is formed by cellular modifications in the distal convoluted tubule and the afferent arteriole. So, here you have the efferent arteriole and here you have the distal convoluted convoluted tubule. So somewhere around this place it is formed and what does it do? It is a very sensitive organ. So whenever the GFR falls, that is the rate of glomerular filtration, whenever it falls, these cells get activated. So the JGA cells get activated and what happens when they get activated? They release a substance called renin and this renin stimulate the glomerular blood flow back to normal. So that means whenever GFR decreases, the JGA gets activated. Now when JGA gets activated, it releases a substance called renin and renin, what does it does? What does it do? It increases the glomerular filtration rate. So that means it can actually control the glomerular filtration rate. If it goes low, it can make it high. So this is the autoregulatory mechanism of GFR. Question number two, indicate whether the following statements are true or false. Let us look at the first statement. Micturation is carried out by a reflex. Micturation is nothing but urination. It is carried out by a reflex. That is absolutely true because as I said, this, there has to be exchange of signal and there has to be a response received from the brain. And this response is nothing but what is reflex action? The response of the nervous system in response to any stimulus. So here also the stimulus is nothing but the signals which are sent by the uh, receptor cells on the wall or the stretch receptors on the walls of the urinary bladder. So of course this is carried out by reflex. ADH helps in water elimination making the urine hypotonic. So ADH is antidiuretic hormone. So this is a hormone which helps to remove water. So when you remove water what happens? The Whenever from a solution water is removed it becomes more concentrated. Right, so that solution here is urine. So urine becomes does not become hypotonic, rather it becomes hypertonic. So this is false. Protein-free fluid is filtered from blood plasma into the Bowman's capsule. That is quite right because the fluid, I mean the blood which enters into the glomerulus, it gets filtered, and when it gets filtered, or most of the plasma except the big sized proteins they get into the Bowman's capsule so that is why that is a protein free fluid so this is absolutely correct so it is true Henley's loop plays an important role in concentrating urine of course that's because it helps in removing water in the descending limb so that ways it helps to concentrate the urine so this is true 
glucose is actively reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule now as i said pct or proximal convoluted tubule is that part of the renal tubule where maximum reabsorption of nutrients take place so of course glucose is also actively reabsorbed in this area so this is also true let us look at question number 3 match the items of column 1 with those of column 2 so this is what we have in column 1 and column 2. So let us try to match them. Ammonotelism. What is ammonotelism? That is uh, excreting waste in the form of ammonia. So in which organisms do we see ammonotelism? It is generally seen in aquatic animals like the bony fish. So this will match to 3. That is bony fish. Bowman's capsule. What is Bowman's capsule? It is not related to birds. Is it related to water reabsorption? No, not really. Is it related to urinary bladder? No. Is it related to renal tubule? Yes, because Bowman's capsule is the first part of the renal tubule. Okay, micturation that is urination is something which is related to urinary bladder. So this will match to this. Uricotelism, that is excreting in the form of uric acid and it is generally seen in birds. ADH, the one I spoke about some time back, the antidiuretic hormone, it helps in water reabsorption because it helps to remove water from the urine and thus makes the urine more concentrated. Question number four. What is meant by the term osmoregulation? As I mentioned before, also regulation means to control something or to regulate something. Osmo is derived from the word osmosis. So it basically talks about controlling the balance of water and ions. So regulation of water and ionic balance in the body. So that is neither excess of water should be present in the body nor too many ions should be present. So the water and the ions should be present exactly at the, the right amount. So this is a homeostatic mechanism. Homeostasis means, homeostasis would mean a condition where everything is in the desired amount. Everything is in the stable state. That is called homeostasis. It controls the optimum temperature of water and salts in the tissues and the body fluids. Because only if the optimum temperature is maintained only then, the right amount of water and right amount of salt would also be present. So osmoregulation is nothing but regulating the content or the balance of water and ions in the body. Let us look at question number 5. Terrestrial animals are generally either ureotelic or uricotelic. Terrestrial animals are generally either ureotelic or uricotelic, not ammonotelic. Why? Now this I mentioned before also. Now as I said, ammonia is something which is highly soluble in water. So if an organism wants to excrete ammonia, it has to excrete a lot of water as well. Because ammonia is present in dissolved form. So aquatic animals can afford to lose that much of water because there is a lot of water present around them. But terrestrial animals really can't do that because not that much of water is present. So they actually need to conserve water. So they do not want to waste water just to excrete ammonia. So instead what do they do? They convert ammonia into urea and then release urea because urea needs lesser water and uric acid needs even lesser water. So that means they can conserve some water and that is why mostly terrestrial animals are ureotelic or uricotelic. So terrestrial animals need to conserve water and ammonia being water soluble can be excreted with loss of water. Hence they are converted to urea. That is one important reason. Also ammonia being very toxic cannot be circulated by blood to reach the excretory system. So here what did you see? We talked about the excretory system in human beings. Now how did the waste materials enter the excretory system in the kidney? So from where did it enter the kidney? Through the afferent arteriole. So they are nothing but the blood vessels. So that means those the blood which is circulating throughout the body is also containing the waste materials which finally is reaching the excretory system to be thrown out out of the body. Now if ammonia is that toxic it is very risky to get it circulated in through the blood. So that way is so, since ammonia is very very toxic so we don't want them at all to be there in the body. So these are some of the reasons why terrestrial animals are generally ureotelic or uricotelic but not ammonotelic. 
Question number seven. Name the following. A corded animal having flame cells as excretory structures. So this is a special animal which is always which is a corded, that is they have the notochord, but at the same time the excretory structures there are the flame cells. You remember why I was talking about the platy helmets? I told that flame cells are the specialized excretory structures here. So these kind of um, corded animal is amphioxus. So here you can look at the picture of amphioxus. This is how it looks like. Next is cortical portions projecting between the medullary pyramids in the human kidney. So in the human kidney, let us look at the human kidney. This is how the kidney looks like. Which are the pyramids? These are the medullary pyramids, these structures. So what is there in between the medullary pyramids? They are the cortical portions. That is a part of the cortex looks like columns. So these columns are known as renal columns or they are also known as columns of Bertini. So both are the same thing. The third one is a loop of capillary running parallel to the Henley's loop. So Henley's loop is this U-shaped loop, the yellow colored one. This is Henley's loop and what is running parallel to Henley's loop? That is nothing but the Vasa recta. So Vasa recta is the answer. Question number eight, fill in the gaps. So we used to do this in our junior classes, but again, we found one here. The ascending limb of Henley's loop is dash to water, whereas the descending limb is dash to it. So this was your Henley's loop. One of the, oh, these loops were impermeable to water and the other one was impermeable to the salts. So here we are talking about water. So which, this is the descending limb, this is the ascending limb. So the descending limb allowed passage of water. So this is permeable to water. So the descending limb is permeable to water but the ascending limb was impermeable to water. Reabsorption of water from distal parts of the tubules is facilitated by the hormone and hor there is a hormone which plays a very important role in reabsorption of water in the distal part of tubule that means in these parts the collecting duct and the dct what is that hormone that is adh that is antidiuretic hormone dialysis fluid contain all the constituents as in plasma except so what is the dialysis fluid now we know what is dialysis basically now when the kidneys do not function properly then what happens the blood inside our body contains a lot of waste materials so we follow a technique called dialysis where we tend to purify the blood so the fluid which comes out of that technique is the dialysis fluid and it contains all the constituents as in plasma except what is not there except the nitrogenous wastes so the wastes are not there and that is why we are doing dialysis because the kidney is not able to perform the function of uh, purifying the blood. So that has to be done externally. A healthy adult human excretes dash grams of urea per day. As I said, it excretes 1 to 1.5 liters of urine which contains around 25 to 30 grams of urea. And this is excreted in one day by a healthy human adult. So with this we have reached so with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and I hope that uh, this lesson on excretory products and their elimination would have helped you. Uh, so please try to understand the concepts of how the various processes take place inside our body. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.